This is a 98.9 The Drive special presentation from Studio B at 993 Princess. We're live at The Drive. Live at The Drive. On Essential Alternative, 98.9 The Drive. Good afternoon, it's Reed and Jenna. We are live at The Drive, a special live at The Drive with Metric, Emily Haynes, Jimmy Shaw in the house. Give it up one more time. Welcome to 98.9 The Drive, so happy to have you guys here this afternoon, uh, and glad this time around you guys playing at the KRC tonight. Without a Facebook, bring Metric to Facebook page. Um, for those who don't know, last time I started this campaign, we were going back and forth, I'm like, we got to get Metric to Kingston, so I started this Facebook uh, group. So glad to see you guys here without the Facebook group this time around. That's true, it just kind of got happened naturally. Um, and uh, after following that too, I had a lot of people that would come up to me and say, hey Reed, we got we to gotta start another Facebook campaign. We got to get like Arcade Fire to Kingston, or we got to get Weezer to Kingston. I said, yeah, but you know, it's, then it loses its cachet a little bit, you know? It's about Metric, we did it for Metric, and that was it. So uh, glad to guys, uh, have you guys here. Uh, last time you were here as well, it was a Monday, and uh, we declared it uh, Metric Monday, and we gave you the proclamation backstage. I don't know if you recall. I have that on my wall. No. Well, then that answers. <laughs> now, are you being serious? I'm being totally okay. serious. Well, my house is in renovations, but it's now in the stack of stuff that's going to go back on the wall. Oh, so it's in a done. stack of stuff. All right. Well, then there you go. Good to know. Yeah. Then. Uh, excellent. Uh, it's just up the right beside the Juno, then I guess, right? Yeah, actually, I don't think I have some of those Junos. Sold them on eBay or something? You win one, you have to pay for it. So that's okay. Good. I'll buy that. Excellent. Uh, all right, so congratulations on Synthetica. What a fantastic album once again. Did Thank it up. Did it very nice. Thank you very much. Um, I read that uh, it's about finding courage to stay home and deal with your own reflection in the mirror. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, usually when I'm writing, I, I go away. I disappear somewhere. Um, this time, I just stayed home. I stayed and played my old piano in my old neighborhood, and uh, it was a really a, a, a time of taking stock of what had happened in my life over the past ten years, what had happened in my community, in the in the world, and my friends and my family. So, it really was uh, it really informed the way the album was written. Uh, did you at any point look in the mirror yourself, and did, what realizations did you come to, perhaps about yourself? Well, I think it's all in the record, or I wouldn't. That's kind of the point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the other interesting thing, too, about the, uh, if you have the disc, and hopefully you do, it's, uh, it's the, the lyrics are mirrored, and you got a, a mirror, a little piece of a mirror to actually be able to read it. Whose idea was that? Who came up with that idea? Because it's kind of cool. Oh, we work with a, uh, an artist named Justin Broadbent. He did our video for Youth Without Youth as well, the video for Sick Muse, and he did the artwork. So I think he, you know, it's a really amazing idea to, you know, as soon as you open it, you really feel engaged with what you're holding on to. It's not this you know, sort of um, static experience. You actually have to interact with the with the thing you're holding in your hand. And uh, it's, it even shocked me, even though I knew it was there, when you open it up and you see yourself uh, right away. So he's a very talented artist. It's a good idea. And it also makes it a little more challenging as well when you <laughs> want to read the liner notes and read the uh, lyrics to the tune. So uh, another uh, cool thing you have on uh, Synthetica is the collaboration with uh, Lou Reed as well on... Uh, Wanderlust, the Wanderlust, and I know you had a chance to uh, perform with uh, Lou at uh, in New York City. I guess talk about how that uh, collaboration came to be and what it was like. Uh, I guess getting a chance to uh, perform it with him live in New York. Uh, yeah, it was a, a great experience. I met Lou at a Neil Young benefit in Vancouver, um, and Kevin Hearn, he's a Canadian musician. He's a keyboard player who plays with Lou as well. He asked me if I'd like to meet him. Of course, I said yes. But I didn't think he would know me or the band at all. Um, and to my surprise, he did. And so when I met him, it's like, you know, hey, Lou, this is Emily Haynes. And he said, ah, Emily, who would you rather be, the Beatles or the Rolling Stones? <laughs> so, which, to your listeners, if you don't know, maybe um, it's a song of ours from Fantasies called Give Me Sympathy. Yeah. So really kind of a nice moment as a writer to um, have him kind of shout that out. So I was quick on my feet, and I responded, "Wow, well, Lou would rather be the Velvet Underground, of course. So I think he likes that cleverness on the spot. And uh, we just really hit it off, talked about a lot of interesting music that came out of New York in sort of my dad's era. And he and his wife, Lori Anderson, who's also you know an amazing artist in her own right, uh, invited me to be part of uh, an event in Australia they were curating. We did a thing in Central Park. It was just kind of an ongoing collaboration. And then when we were finishing the record at Electric Lady, in New York, we really needed this voice, this world-weary kind of voice to to counteract the optimism and you know naive 
uh, hope in the chorus that is my part, you know, just like, I'm going to travel and see the world and, you know, you needed, we really needed someone to say, you know, the wanderlust will carry us on in a way that implies that it's not always going to be that easy. And um, he's definitely someone who could capture that. So he said yes right away, came to the studio, we sang in the booth together, Jimmy engineered, produced the session, and then amazingly it worked out uh, just a few weeks ago that he joined us on stage at Radio City Music Hall. And we actually did an arrangement of the Wanderlust that goes into Pale Blue Eyes, which is a, a favorite um, Velvet Underground song. So it was a great experience all around. So you talk about uh, collaboration, and actually we have a bunch of listener questions that we're going to ask you that were sent to us ahead of time. Uh, but one of them was, uh, any other artists that you would like to collaborate with, uh, who you haven't maybe collaborated with beforehand, if you had to choose, who would it be? Oh, there's so many. I don't know if Jimmy can grab that one, but I, there's I don't know. the world. I mean, you know, that it's, one it's, came to us from nowhere. And, that's yeah. kind of the thing. It's like, I, I just wait till serendipitous moments. It's not like... There's just some artist that like I would just reach out to out of the blue and hope that you have a list would have that you're checking sort of off along the way. You know, it's, the connections just happen by chance, and that's that's how interesting things happen. Live at the Drive, 98.9 The Drive.